Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today we're talking about some Bible verses dealing with the devil. Some folks, they need to be reminded that the devil exists, that the devil is out here, and he's putting people up to doing all sorts of things, and he can do more than you know if you are trying hard to walk with the Lord. Okay? Now, I'm not going to get into why the devil even exists, because that's a conversation between you and the Lord. But what I am going to do is pull out these scriptures, and I'm going to take you through these scriptures as much as I can in terms of getting you prepared for what's to come. Because there's always something right around the corner. You already went through a battle, now here comes the devil again, showing up, moving on people's spirits to say ugly things, to be ignorant, to be selfish, to be rude, to come up with some plan to keep you out of something. Okay, there's always something going on in the spiritual realm concerning believers. Just because it hasn't been made manifest yet, doesn't mean that it's not going to take place. Because some people say, well, you know, I haven't had anything happen. Of course you haven't had anything happen yet. Yet. But the longer you walk with the Lord, yes, you are going to be under some spiritual trials. And there are times where you're not under trials. It's just that the enemy is just going to come. And he's just going to sit and wait for you. Whether he's in the flesh or whether he is in the supernatural. He's going to wait for you. And when his orders are to come in. And do a number on you, God will let it happen. But why would God do that? Well, because he has his reasons. And sometimes it's because we have done some things that we have no business. And other times we're like Job. We're just going through some tests. First Peter 5, 8, be sober. The Bible says be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Okay. He's walking about. He's roaring. He's up to no good. Now picture a a person. Because some people, there's odd images that come into their head concerning the devil. Just picture a person. A person with an attitude. A person that's angry. A person that's bitter. A person that's yelling. A person that's just walking around the house. Having an attitude. Ready to say something negative to you. Okay? That's how the devil operates. He's trying to pull you in. He's looking around to see, hmm, who am I going to devour? Who am I going to destroy? Who am I going to make feel the way I feel right now? Okay? But the Bible says we're supposed to be sober. You're not supposed to drink and get drunk with folks. Okay? If you know that somebody around you is a hothead, do you uh, turn your back on that person? Especially if you're the one who made them angry? And we're being vigilant. We're being determined. We're being focused. We are ready. We are able. We are willing. We are going to just keep fighting a good fight. We're going we're going to stand. We're not going to just allow the enemy to keep messing with us. That's why we call on God and we ask that his angels encamp all around us. We ask that he protect us from all harm and danger. We ask that the Lord will not put no more on us than we can bear. We walk around with spiritual armor, according to Ephesians 6. So you know that the devil's around. You know that he's roaring like a lion. But I'm not about to be a fool and turn my back or get drunk with the devil or sit up there and encourage him or her to keep doing evil things. Or to incite war if I know I'm not covered. Second Corinthians eleven fourteen, and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Now all of this, ooh, you know Satan's evil. He's dark. He's ugly. He's this, that, and the other. Well, there are times where Satan is an angel of light. He comes in and he's being sweet and nice and being considerate and giving. Satan does that too. He comes up with some interesting plans. They sound righteous. They sound honest. They sound legit. They sound legal. And then later on you find out, oh my goodness. It was nothing but wicked demons in that man to allow all those things to take place with that woman or that man or that group. I can't believe how, you know, the devil used that man like that. 
or use that woman to come over here and start all this drama. This is crazy, but she looks so beautiful and he was so nice. <sighs> Lord Jesus, James 4, 7 says, submit yourselves therefore to God. So why are there so many mainstream media entertainers and so forth submitting themselves to the devil? The Bible says we're supposed to resist the devil and he will flee from you. You know why they don't resist the devil? Because they don't want that money fleeing. They don't want them opportunities fleeing. They don't want those promises being pushed aside. They want to be famous. That's why they don't resist the devil. But they're Christians, some of those artists. Those are believers, yes, but it doesn't matter when money is more important, opportunities more important to them, fame. You got to look at people's priorities they claim God if God is really that important then they would resist the devil I don't care how much money I don't care how much opportunity or anything else I've got to resist the devil why because if I don't resist the devil I know what's going to happen he's going to sooner or later destroy me go back to first Peter 5 8 last part there seeking whom he may devour that is the end result that's why so many end up on drugs alcohol you name it they didn't resist the devil the devil said, I'm staying. Hey, Lord, they accepted me. The Lord says, okay. <laughs> Ephesians 6, 11 and 12. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Right? The whole armor. So I'm going to a family function, for instance, or to a board meeting or to a courtroom or to a hospital. Or to a funeral where I know everybody's going to be showing out and acting up. I got to put on the whole armor of God. It's not a physical armor. It's a supernatural armor. I'm praying in the spirit before I step out in the name of Jesus. I just ask that your blood covering be put upon me. That when I go into this atmosphere, that I will be able to stand strong according to your will. I want the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation. I want the belt of truth. I want my feet shod with the gospel. Come on. I want the shield of faith. Jesus, he shined up a washing gaze. Revelation 20:10 and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet uh oh false prophets exist yes yes for some people it's breaking news because they're new believers they just assume that well you know there's Christians right that are truthful and honest and yeah but there's also people who pose as going back to 2 Corinthians 11:14 Satan himself is transformed transformed into an angel of light so he has a bunch of different characters and personas and, you know, false fronts. He's got a lot going on with him. And then what does Revelation 20.10 says? And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. The beast and the false prophet are going to be tormented day and night forever and ever. So as we see more and more of an uprising of all sorts of creatures that we've never seen before in our lives. And as we see more and more false prophets and so forth, too, there will be the beast that shows up and the false prophet that shows up in these last days. It's like the it's like the crumb de la crumb of evil. But the Lord tells us that they're going to be tormented day and night forever and ever. John 8, 44 says, ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. Now, why in the world would a person think that if somebody has a long track record of lying to them that, oh, OK, the truth is going to be in them? Maybe a partial truth, but they're going to go back to lying again sooner or later. There is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. Lies. Lots and lots of lies. That's one way of figuring out whether somebody is of light or of darkness. Whether they are following after the one true God or the devil. You can use this sort of test with those civic groups before you join them you can use a test 
on uh, an individual who wants to be in your life. See if the truth is in them. Spend some time talking. Spend some time watching. Don't spend time giving up anything. And eventually, when those lies start creeping out of their mouths, you're going to praise the Lord that you took your time, that you did not get married, didn't have sex with them, didn't join the group, didn't pay you all this money out. You're going to be glad. Give some people time. I'm hearing that in the spirit. Some of you are, you don't give people enough time to figure them out. And that's why they end up coming into your life, doing the same old, same old that people before you did. James 1, 13 through 15 says, let no man say when he is tempted, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. God, God cannot be tempted with evil. And God's not going to be tempting you with no evil. Now he'll tempt you in terms of drawing near to him, <laughs> but tempting you to do some evil acts. No, don't blame God. There are those that are tempted because their flesh overrides their spirit. I'm tempted because I, in a way I want that. I ain't going to lie. Ooh, I want it. Okay. And you keep on looking at it and you keep on smelling it and you keep coming around it and you keep being around individuals and eventually you're going to end up doing it. And then you're on the wrong side with the Lord when that happens. First Corinthians 10, 13, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. So Satan tempts men and women to do evil, just as he did with Adam and Eve in Genesis. Okay. And so then when he tempts men and women, they have, or children too, they have a choice whether to do it or not. Okay. And if they say no, God makes a way for them to escape. And even if they say yes, but they haven't committed the act yet, God still gives them some way of getting out of it. John 10, 10, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. We recognize that with a thief, right? Excellent example. But what did Jesus say? I am come that they might have life. He doesn't want you to be prematurely dying. The devil wants you to because he don't like humans. And he likes when they conjure him up and when they do their dark chants and when they have festivities in his name and all that. Because he knows that, ooh, that means that I've got another one I can destroy. I got another one I can kill in mind, body, and spirit. I got another one I can steal from. And he thinks that these people are very stupid, very unintelligent. Because if only they knew just how great I am, the devil says, and how I can take you out. And how I can't stand you all. I am come that they might have life, Jesus said, and that they might have it more abundantly. Jesus came to lift people up, not to destroy them. Jesus came to save some people from themselves. <laughs> as well as from the evil one. Because some people, they are being used by the enemy to kill themselves. Via drink, drunkenness, suicide destroying themselves on the inside out as well as other people. But when I go to Jesus, I know that it's not about killing and stealing and destroying. He died on a cross already. I don't have to put myself on a cross, but the enemy will say, yes, you do. Yes, you do. You can put yourself on a cross on all sorts of ways because to hang on a cross is a curse, right? It's a curse. They were cursing Jesus. They were punishing Jesus. They were speaking evil of Jesus. And you got some folks that they're still doing this sort of thing to people. 
Revelation 12, 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Cast out with him. And you got people today that's praying to them angels. They're conjuring up all sorts of spirits. Why in the world would you want to pray to something that's been rejected? To something that can't stand you? To something that is designed to kill, steal, and destroy? And in the spirit, I hear the devil laughing at his own people. Saying in the spirit how stupid they are. And why bother talking to him? He said, I got him already. Does he have you? Does he have you through materialism? Does he have you through cursing, lying, stealing? Does he have you by telling you that you ought to jump off a cliff or kill yourself or any number of things? Does he have you? Jesus, he's shiand double washing gaze. James 2.19, thou believest that there is one God, thou do, dost well, the devils also believe and tremble. Isaiah 14.12, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Ephesians 2.2, 2, where in time past ye walketh according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. That's where everybody, every believer come from that atmosphere. And then we ask the Lord to come and intervene into our lives. And then he starts cleaning some stuff up. But we all are in, all are in darkness when we are not walking with the Lord. Revelation 21 a says, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars. You hear all these different people named and yet people will watch their movies, right? <laughs> people will support their projects. People will marry folks like this. People will have babies to people that are like this. They will teach folks their ways. Where, what, what's going to happen with these abominable murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and liars? They shall have their part in the lake, which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So all those folks are nothing more than walking dead. Jesus. And so that's it. I got nothing else for you today when it comes to the devil, because this energy draining, just talking about him. But I have to make some people aware that God is not pleased. He is not pleased when we are supporting the devil's work, when we are listening to the devil's music, and then we go and we take the devil's music and apply the devil's music to our lifestyles. Uh-oh, come on. He is not happy with us when we lie, when we steal, when we work with others to lie and steal. He is not happy in Jesus' mighty name when we are allowing the enemy to win by giving him a foothold in our lives. God said, I cleaned you up. I took that foolishness out of your life. Why are you dirtying yourself back up again? So confess any sin and repent. Lord Jesus, I will do it right with I will do it right with you, listener. <sighs> Lord Jesus, we confess sin right now. All sins, Lord, that have just caused many problems, not just for us, but for others as well. Lord, you know what those sins are. And then you proceed to list all your sins, right? Oh, there was the, the, it, there was the, uh, the, the angry outburst the other day. And I just pray in Jesus name, Lord, it, you please forgive me. And I pray in Jesus name, Lord, that I will have a better reaction to things rather than react that I will instead just act, just do whatever it is that you called me to 
Lord, also, I repent of any disobedience, times where I should have done something that you told me, but I procrastinated. And I pray in Jesus' name that the next time I'm supposed to do something, that I'll go ahead and do it. And for those things that I haven't done, that I will go, that I will do them ASAP. I thank you, Jesus, for what you're about to do in my life as well as the listeners' lives. Keep the enemy at bay. Put your angels of protection all around us. Thank you, Jesus. And that's it. Amen and hallelujah and praise the Lord. We don't need to fall into the devil's device, uh, vices. We don't need to, uh, you know, make excuses. When God warns us and when other people warn us that the devil is here, that he's doing some things, that he's shaking up the atmosphere, not only are we supposed to prepare ourselves for anything that is to come or get ourselves up out of some tempting situations, but we need to be alerting other people as well. When you see that they're falling by the wayside, that they're lying, that they're stealing, that they're getting caught up in some stuff, don't be fearful to speak truth. Don't worry that, oh, that person's not going to talk to me anymore. Speak the truth anyway. Yes, have, has there been people who have died as a result of speaking truth? Of course, but that's what the enemy wants. He wants you to focus in on this person died. This person got this taken away from them. This person ended up having all these difficulties and so forth because they went against the devil or the devil's group or the devil's, you know, whatever he got going on. And so therefore we are going to make sure that you don't do the same thing. So we're going to plaster, you know, uh, folks faces all over the place that were truth tellers, truth seekers, people warning the public. And so what do people do? They fear that sort of thing. And so they don't speak up when they should be speaking up. I heard that a blogger went to jail. So what? I'm supposed to stop blogging. Well, I heard that if y'all talk like that, woo, there's some kind of group out there that will take you out. Oh, so we're supposed to just what? Go along with the program and feed the populist lies. Well, if I was you, I would wash my back because they don't have to hurt you. They can hate your family, you know, and hurt them. Oh, OK. So if they do that, then they do that. What? You don't care about your family? No, I care about my family. But I'm telling you right now that if God allows that sort of thing to happen, it was time for them to go anyway. And it wouldn't matter whether somebody took them out or didn't take them out. Behind what I said, God was ready to take them home. We got to stop with this being scared about every little thing. Satan wants you to scare, be fearful of him more so than you would ever even think to be fearful of God. And a lot of times the reason why people do not fear God is because there's been so much marketing and propaganda to fear Satan. That they end up thinking, well, you know, God is nice and he's good and all that, but Ugh, stop right there. There's a lot of stuff that God does in the Bible. You should fear him more so than even thinking about fearing Satan because he's the one that created you and he's also the one responsible for taking you out. And if you want some souls saved, then it would make sense to speak truth and not, uh, you know, fall into speaking lies. Well, that's it. Uh, my work is done today. I thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to listen. Please do check the description box for anything that might be of interest. You've been listening to YouTube NM Enterprise 7. If you haven't subscribed, we do want you to do that. And if you haven't given, well, we welcome your donations. To God be the glory.